Well, political scandal may be the talk of the town in Washington, but there's still serious business to take care of in Congress, including immigration and the budget. So how will the administration's troubles impact those efforts on Capitol Hill? With me now, Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio. Senator Rubio, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'll, let me start with the IRS president's announcement yesterday, the resignation. Uh, did you hear enough from the president? Are the actions that he announced uh, satisfactory to you? Well, first of all, I think the resignation is appropriate. I called for that on Monday, but it's just the beginning. It's not nearly enough. I think there should be prosecutions of individuals that were responsible here in abusing their power. I also think it's important for the president to be honest about the culture of intimidation that his administration has created here. This is a president that as late as last Monday was in New York City basically saying that he knows there's Republicans that are willing to work with him, but they're afraid of their base or they're afraid of Rush Limbaugh. Always ascribing uh, ulterior motives to his opponents, always questioning what they whether there's an honest disagreement or not. There's no honest policy disagreement with this administration. And as a result, it's created this culture of intimidation that's pervasive throughout the White House and the federal government. And I think all of this is a product of that. I really do. Uh, you don't think that, po I mean, you know, uh, you know, both sides play politics and both sides like to try to figure out the motivations of the other side when they're talking to political supporters. I mean, this is not right. new so, to but, the American political system, Senator. Okay, but, but, it's, but it goes well beyond that. It goes, it goes to the core of the following. You have campaign donors to Mitt Romney that are being attacked on Obama's website and within a few weeks that individual is being audited, not once, but two IRS audits. You have the evidence of the NLRB trying to muscle Boeing because they decided to move their plant. This is not an isolation. I mean, these are all, this is a string of events where you see an administration and a federal government under this administration that's willing to use its power to muscle and to hardball people who don't agree with them. And now it appears to include the Associated Press. So there's a problem here. There, there, one thing is politics, as you've outlined. Another thing is this full-time, 24-7, 365-day-a-year political effort where everything is about politics, everything is about destroying your opponent, everything is about dividing the American people for your electoral gain. Well, Senator, your PAC put out an email raising money on the IRS issue and, that's right. uh, and doing a petition. Well, that's playing, that, that, that petition. that's campaigning, that's politics too. No. Is well, it is. It is. But, what I'm, but, but here's the point in mind. I'm trying to get a petition of American citizens and Americans who support us in this endeavor so that we can rally people together to work against these sorts of abuse of power. That's different from going around and saying, I am going to put up on my website every single day, every donor to the Obama campaign, I'm going to attack that individual, a private citizen by name, and I'm going to try to create this culture where people feel intimidated if they oppose me. Those are two very different things that I'm talking I'm, about. I want to ask you, you're obviously working on this bipartisan proposal you know, one of the meetings the president had yesterday was a one-on-one -on -one with Senator McCain, one of your uh, partners in the Gang of Eight proposal on immigration. Do, does this IRS issue in particular, but all of the cloud right now hanging over the Obama White House, hurt your efforts to get immigration reform passed? Well, I, the bottom line is I think we need to deal with immigration reform. It's a problem that's hurting the country. We have to get that solved. One of the impediments to immigration reform is a lack of trust in the federal government. In particular, we're hearing this now from Democrats. At least two Democrats came forward yesterday and said they will not support the bill unless it has strong border measures to prevent another wave of illegal immigration. And the fundamental problem we have faced is that people are saying to us, we don't trust the federal government. We don't think the plan the federal government will come up with will be good. And obviously, anytime people lose mm -hmm. trust in the government even more, it makes it harder to make that argument. So we do have that hill or that obstacle to overcome. But immigration reform has to happen because our country has a very serious problem with a broken legal immigration system and with an illegal immigration. What do you uh, say to a wavering, what do you say to a wavering Republican that uh, you're trying to woo and we know that you need a certain number, the politics of, of how things get passed in Congress, CCAs, you need at least probably half of your Republican colleagues on board on the Senate side. What's your case to them if they say, hey, this isn't going to be popular back home because of a distrust of government issue? Well, then well, the alternative is to do nothing. The only way I know how to solve a problem is to get involved. If you have a distrust in government, then you need to get involved in passing laws and doing things here in Washington to increase that trust in government or to force government to do the things we believe government should be doing, like securing the border. But look, what's the alternative? The status quo? The status quo is to leave in place what everyone's complaining about. The status quo is amnesty. The status quo is a broken legal immigration system. The status quo is the thing that's creating this distrust in government. So we can't leave the status quo. And then and the question is, we have to do something. What is that something? And I hope people will be engaged productively. If they don't agree with my ideas, I hope they'll offer their own. 
But to say that we're just against anything is, is to say I'm in favor of the status quo, and I, I reject that. A couple more issues, the emails that the White House released on Benghazi. Are you satisfied that campaign politics didn't play a role, uh, even if potentially bureaucratic agency politics may be uh, truly at, uh, at the root cause well, of the I, back and forth here? Yeah, if you, if you recognize that from the State Department, there was references to how the leadership in the State Department was uncomfortable with the direction of those emails. That should be explored further. But my fundamental problem in the Benghazi issue has always been that there was a steady string of reporting that outlined how dangerous Benghazi had become. Quite frankly, I think that outpost should have probably been closed, but if they weren't going to close it, it should have had sufficient security. That did not happen. And the mechanisms that were used to make that CIA, decision are still in place. Do you think this was a CIA problem, though, more than a state problem, since we now, well, the more we learn, this opinion, may have been a CIA outpost? Yeah, but, well, there's two different uh, facilities right. there. Let me just say this. Uh, as far as the, the consulate situation is concerned and where the ambassador was, there was a steady string of reporting. And if you look at it, it's all there, that this was a very dangerous part of the country, that Benghazi in particular was a very dangerous place. The British had already left because of it. If you were going to keep that place open, you better have enough security there. And the security they had there was inadequate. The ability to respond to the attack was inadequate. Mm -hmm. That falls on the State Department. And my right. biggest fear is that the mechanisms and the people who made that decision are are still making those decisions right now for our outposts all over the world and other dangerous places. Very quickly, do you support the new media shield law that's going to get reintroduced by Senator Schumer? Well, to be honest with you, I haven't even read it. I don't fully understand the details of it. I'm certainly concerned about what happened to the Associated Press, and I'm concerned about what I think was an abuse of power at the Department of Justice as well. But, uh, but I'll need to read that law before I can give you a hard opinion on it. All right. Senator Marco Rubio, Republican from the state of Florida. Senator Go Rubio. <laughs> well, rare for you to say that, Mr. Gator. But anyway, <laughs> thank you very much, Senator. Thank you.